Today is one of our favorite subjects to cover a lot, balanced audio, but in a little bit different way. It's going to be more about XLR connectors specifically. So it comes from David in Southern California, kind of my old stomping grounds. I was, <laughs> I was raised in pretty much Anaheim, California, went to school in Placentia, California at Valencia High School and was honored at Valencia High School to be the first student council member in 35 years to be thrown off the student council for something other than academic reasons. My grades were okay, but I got, I got nailed ditch in school and I got thrown off of the council and reprimanded. I had to, my mom made me go out and clean. I got suspended from school for a week and I had to go clean windows at my parents' house. So, yeah, I'm pretty proud. That was a great distinction. The thrown off student, I was the boys league president and got thrown off for disciplinary reasons. So, you know, you can all be really proud of me. All right, David, <laughs> hope you're not a graduate of Valencia High School. And now you know a famous guy if you do. Uh, why is it there are so few balanced audio connections available on high-end preamps? Mm -hmm. As an example, I have a media server, SACD player, and a phono preamp that all have balanced audio outputs. Obviously, I'd like to use those balanced outputs. <laughs> yeah. Unfortunately, my preamp only has one balanced audio input. Other preamps that I've looked at have one, or if you're lucky, two balanced inputs. It seems that you have to spend crazy money for a preamp with more than uh, one or possibly two balanced audio inputs. Why is this? Is this simply a cost issue? Are balanced audio circuits more difficult to build? It would be wonderful if manufacturers would offer more balanced audio inputs on their products. I couldn't agree more. And I and PS Audio are as guilty as the next. We currently make two preamplifiers, the Stellar Gain Cell DAC, which is a great preamplifier, but it has one XLR input, just as he is describing. Our BHK has seven XLR inputs and seven RCA inputs, but it's crazy expensive. <laughs> so we we are it, it, maybe he was looking right at our company, you know, and going, eh, you know, why don't you do that? So we could do that. We don't do that because of a couple of reasons. But let me let me answer uh, one of the questions about cost. So. If your preamp has a balanced audio input of any kind, and if it's a true balanced audio input, meaning it's not just a, um, a throwaway circuit like you see, a lot of pro audio stuff has balanced inputs, but they don't, aren't really balanced. They just, they, 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 they don't run into, take advantage of the common mode rejection. They're just there for convenience, and they only tap off one of those and then run into it. At least that's how it used to be. Now maybe today they've, they've, um, they've done better. I, I, I hope they have, because no, it's not a complicated circuit. It's, it's not tricky, it's not complicated. It could be as simple as a 30 cent op amp can take care of a balanced input. Where costs go up is in the switching. So, well, here, sorry, let's back up. I got, I got, I got waylaid by the, by the befuddled brain. Where I was going with that is that once you have a balanced input of any kind, then the circuitry is there. Now you're just switching between inputs and there isn't separate circuitry for each input. The way it works is a preamplifier has one set of electronics, the left and right inputs, and those can be balanced or unbalanced, differential, single end, whatever they are, tube, vacuum, you know, whatever. There's just one. And then the input selector selects the connectors and distributes that to the one amplification circuit. So one amplification circuit, multiple, you could have 15 or 20 connectors on the back and you're just using a switch to uh, connect those up. Now it used to be 
in the good old days where we would use a rotary input selector and this was a wafer switch that had a double pole because you've got stereo right and you would click 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 you've seen those that's just a mechanical switch and the number of poles or the number of of um, contacts on there was determined by what kind of switch you bought when remote controls came in to play now all of a sudden those rotary switches didn't work so uh, a you know three dollar rotary switch all of a sudden turned into a two and a half dollar relay and most relays are stereo they're what we call a double pole double throw which means that the the poles are the number of of uh, things that are being switched and the throw is whether it goes uh well anyway we don't need to get into all that that's I, I, I tend to get off in these engineering terms and people go, oh God, and they yawn and go away. Don't want that to happen, sorry. Anyway, most relays have two switches inside of them and they can select left and right. But when you have true stereo, uh, I'm sorry, true balanced inputs, now all of a sudden you've added another dimension to it because now left has two inputs because you have the balanced, all, remember it has the plus and the minus input, inverting, non-inverting. So now you, that one relay now turns to two relays. And relays are not cheap. Like we don't scrimp on relays, whether it's in our lower cost Stellar products or our higher cost BHK, we spend a lot of money on relays. Why? Because those switches have to be reliable over a long period of time, so they need gold contacts, silver at a minimum, they have to be waterproof, they have to be environmental proof, and they have to work for millions of operations if you're going to have a product that's going to last 20, 30 years. So we use the same relay in our very expensive BHK preamp as opposed to our lower cost Stellar preamp for same types of relays in there. And we do that on purpose because we want to make a high quality product without compromise. To do that, you have to compromise somewhere. I think, what is a, a Stellar gain cell DAC is like 1700 bucks or 1800 something like that. And a BHK, I think it's like $6,000, $7,000. So at PS Audio, at least, our products always reflect a specific multiplier of parts and labor. So when you spend $1,700 on one of our preamps, you can be assured that there's $1,700 worth of parts and labor in there. And when you buy a six or $7,000 BHK preamp, the same can be said there. We just simply, when we price a product out, we look at what it costs to make and we multiply it. And that allows enough room for the dealers to make some money, for us to make some money and keep going, producing these fine videos for you. <laughs> and, um, and so it's a pretty simple formula. So if I were to now have to add well, we've got, what, six inputs on the back? If I have to add um, six, what would I have to add? Six more relays. I think they, I don't know what they cost, but they're not cheap. Um, that's going to raise the retail price up, plus the connectors, plus the PC board space, and it all adds up. If we were to do that, you'd probably have to spend another $100, $200 on the retail price in order to afford that. So, yes. It is cost. We always have to balance our products to give the, 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 the essence, the core of what we're trying to achieve with those products to our customers. Quick example, Stellar. When we looked at Stellar, my goal in that was to build an under $2,000 preamplifier without any compromise to sound quality within that price category. So I want to be able to say to somebody, if, if you're going to spend four or $5,000, then um, you know, that, 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 that's a whole category to itself. But if you're going to spend anything close to $4,000, consider the Stellar. Why? Because we wanted to build a under $2,000 product that performed like a four or $5,000 product to the ear, 
to the senses as we operate the, the products. Well, in order to do that, in order to make circuitry that is of that level of quality, that doesn't come for free. So you've got to compromise somewhere. And where we compromise is in the fanciness of the chassis, the number and the type of connectors on the back, and the bells and whistles that we might have on a fancier product. I didn't want to give up performance, so what did I give up? I gave up connectors on the back, like tons of XLR. So that's the answer. I wish I had a, like, gosh, tomorrow we're going to make one with all XLRs on the back. But that's not the core of this product. It's performance that we're more interested in. And those are the compromises we made. Okay. Thank you. I appreciate the question, and I hope the answer was okay. And we'll talk to you tomorrow. Okay. Bye-bye.